How's it going, everybody? And welcome back to Hardcore Super Flat. Now, guess what? I finished the rest of that little area that needed to be done, and I put in a few more little... I don't know what we're calling it. I put a, a couple more of these in for some future mountain projects that we have, but I have some really exciting news. As you can tell, we've got some llamas down here. I had a wandering trader come by. Look at this. <laughs> a little baby llama. It's so cute. I got something I've been looking for for a long time, and that is pointed dripstone. And I'm going to need to set myself up a farm, but I've got a bit of an idea that I wanted to test out. Okay, so here's what I want to do. I do probably end up want to make a bigger dripstone farm in the future, and let's see if we can figure out a way to convert one of these pieces into a dripstone farm. So here's kind of what I'm thinking. I'm thinking maybe I can repurpose this small area of this farm and plant some pointed dripstone. Plant? Put some pointed dripstone here and maybe we could turn this into a bit of a pointed dripstone farm. Now this would work the same way as the sugarcane farm. Once it grows down here and updates this observer, the, it's going to fire these pistons, and those pistons, you know, if it grows down far enough, it's going to knock stuff off. Now, the problem is, if we put water here, that's going to fire those pistons. Um, so, But I don't know if... Let's test this out. Will it fire... Will, will the dripstone grow down into the water, or will it not? Warning! Major distraction incoming. Now, I don't know if you guys are like this, but do you ever have like a plan for Minecraft? You log in, you know exactly what you're going to do, and then something happens and everything changes? Well, that's exactly what's happened to me. I was planning on working more on the mountain and the Mason villagers, but with that point of dripstone and trying to figure out that farm, I was thinking about some of the comments from the last video, and those comments said, Maybe I should add a water feature somewhere along here. And you know what? I think I want to add one right here. I've been working for days trying to figure out this new farm that I wanted to build. And I've got something exciting. But first, I need to collect some wheat. I also need to restock my redstone reserves. That's a good start. And now that we've gathered those materials, I actually want to start, uh, I guess, recouping some of these. Oh, I want to start recouping some of these materials because uh, I have a lot of sugar cake. It's not that I don't need it anymore. It's just I want to condense this farm and this new and improved farm is really going to blow your mind. So let me just... Uh, let's try that again. So let me attempt to tear this farm down, and then we'll get started on the big new farm. Okay, so now that I've got everything gathered, I want to walk through uh, what I've been doing uh, with this new farm idea. So I'm going to put some temporary blocks right here, and we're going to put a couple of chests right on top of that. And then we're going to grab some hoppers, and we're going to go eight. Six, seven, eight. All right, let's get ourselves a little bit of a path up here. And now I'm going to put some mud blocks on top of here. Now, this farm is heavily inspired by Tango Tech's sugar cane farm that I built uh, earlier that you saw me tear parts of it down. Whenever I was trying to design something for the dripstone that could possibly work with the sugar cane, I really uh, dove in and came up with something that I think is pretty cool and it's going to use target blocks so let's just get here and put some target blocks up and then we're going to put some more pistons on top of those and then just to cover these up to make it look nice you can use whatever block you want to i'm just going to put the smooth the smooth stone here for now all right so that's kind of one area of the farm. Now I do need to grab the next thing and that is the dripstone. So we're gonna put our dripstone right here because this is what our pointed dripstone will sit on and this is what 
we will do. Now, on top of this will be all of our water. So I'm not gonna put water up here just now because uh, eventually this will be just one big body of water. And I think it's gonna look pretty cool. So in order to, oh, of course it's raining, in order to get ourselves um, the actual farm to work and see everything is I need to grab an observer. We're gonna put that observer facing that direction. We're gonna put one right down into it. And then from there, I'm going to put one of these right here and then right there. And now I'm going to run a line of blocks all the way behind this set of pistons with a redstone dust behind it and going all the way to those observers just like that. Now on this other side to power this, all you need to do is come down here to the observer. Oh, one low. We'll go there. And then come around the backside and do the exact same thing. All right, so there's that. So now whenever something is placed right here in front of this block, it's going to power all of these pistons. So I'll show you by doing that. Oh, that's a clock. Horrible choice. That was a clock. <laughs> but you see that it works. Here, let's let's uh, do a non-clock block. Non-clock clock block that's a dangerous word to say so there you go so they're all powered by that one item updating that observer now down here we can put our sugar cane up here we'll put our pointed dripstone and the reason we're doing the mud is because we can just use hoppers underneath this to collect all the sugar cane and all of the dripstone. I think this is a pretty awesome compact design and what's really cool is the fact that it's expandable so we're going to come right over here and I'll, I'll start from this area right here. But all you have to do is come in here and we're going to put the exact same thing on this side right here. So we'll start with some target blocks and then we'll put pistons right on top of those and beneath them. And then we can get ourselves another row of hoppers here and a chest. I'm going to need to make some more hoppers, but these will go right here. And then the mud blocks will sit on top of those. Now you might be saying to yourself, Soho, um, you're kind of forgetting something. You kind of need to make sure that there's water in here for these blocks. Now I didn't forget. All right, let's put this here. All you have to do, and we'll use dirt for this, is come right here. And we'll just put in a little platform of dirt just like this. And that'll go all the way to the end. And then if we come down over here, we'll block this end off and now you can just put your water sources here and here that'll flow all the way to the end and now you can put your sugar cane right there so let me take this down so you can see what that looks like again you can do this with any box it doesn't have to be dirt because you might not like the way the dirt looks there so now those two are done i would have to do another one on this side if i want to power uh both sides if I don't want to put any more modules over here, I can just run water right next to this block and that's all I have to do. But I can go out again. So then all I need to do is repeat this exact thing on this side and you could expand it as much as you like. So let me go ahead and put on a couple modules here and then we'll take a look at it when I'm done. All right, three more modules added to this awesome farm and I am all done with what I'm going to add today. Now, the really cool thing about this farm is you can expand it in multiple ways. You can expand it, you know, right to left how I did. You can also, you know, if I put that back further, you could make these longer. So I could just daisy chain all of this down even further. It's very similar to how Tango Tech did his design and put repeaters in between. Oh, come on. Let's get some more blocks in. Give me that. Okay, bump up. And then you would put repeaters on a block right here, and then you could extend it out further. Now, you would need to move your chest and add some additional hoppers and things like that. But this is a pretty cool design. Now, from this point on, I would suggest maybe putting like some glass blocks here in the front, just like this. So nothing pops out to the side and everything drops right on the hoppers. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to get to the water feature portion of this farm and now we're going to start working on the actual water feature portion of this farm 
So I'm just going to cover all of this up with dirt right here. And this will be the start, I guess the lowest point of our pond or lake, whatever you want to call it. So let's just jump into a quick time lapse and I'm going to do some terraforming for this lake. Well, hello everyone and welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that time lapse. I'm just spending a little bit of time out here on the lake doing some fishing while it's raining because we all know that is the best time to fish. Oh, and I got a bowl. Well, now that it's done raining, I guess I can fly around and show you exactly what I've done here because you can tell this has changed quite a bit. Now I know I didn't show any of this to you when I was making the video. But if you were on my Discord, you would have seen me designing this entire area because I hung out on Discord and beautified this area. And, and just real quick, I want to thank a specific community member because I was having trouble with this design. And Codex, if you're out there watching this video, thank you so much for designing that chimney. You know, I know, it's amazing. We love it. You love it. I love it. Best chimney you've ever seen. Now, one of the things that I wanted to do here is I did want to make this look a little bit more lived in. So I added some villagers, but I didn't want them to escape. So I got a little secret here. Huh? Right? These guys will not pathfind over the magma cubes. And so I put one right here as well. So these villagers are just going to live in this beautiful fishing hut. Oh, ugh. for all time, I... I guess it's time to sleep, so I'll go to bed too. Now I know what y'all are interested in. You want to know exactly how the farm is doing. And well, I got myself a little bit of an entrance right here. Just do that and we can come down to the farm. And let me tell you this. This farm right here is probably the um, not greatest uh, dripstone farm you've ever seen. So <laughs> it's not doing the best. Let's, let's actually just collect all the dripstone here and we'll see how well it did. Okay, two stacks and 55. Not really the best, but it's beautiful and it's hidden and that was the main thing. Now, I could make this a lot bigger. I could just get rid of all of this, put a flying machine in, but this farm isn't about efficiency. This farm is about beauty this farm is one of the most beautiful farms i've ever built because look at that area it's beautiful it's amazing and and let's just say i'm in love with it so that's gonna do it for me today i hope this video has inspired you to go and try out some different ideas for your farms let's make minecraft beautiful and do our best to hide every single farm we build. And until next time, you all have a beautiful day.